On April 28, 2025, there was an epic blackout across all of Spain and all of Portugal. Uh, power came back on about 23, 24 hours later for both countries. So, right, what the heck happened? Well, at first, Portugal said that Spain said the blackout was caused by an unusual atmospheric phenomenon, but they later retracted that statement. So, that's the beginning of our weirdness here. Well, if you look at the official timeline of events, none of it makes any sense at all. Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus the Tribble. Now, I wanted to cram all of this information into a single video, but it got so long that I've decided to break it into a couple different parts. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Spain outage because this leads us in the direction of looking at the green grid and what it actually means for you and me. So what happened in Spain and Portugal was highly unusual. And we're going to go through the official timeline of events and it's going to get weirder the further we go on. So everything was working fine at first. And then the first thing that happened was there were oscillations in the power grid. What does that mean? Well, power is normally generated by really, really big generators in really big power plants. Now, it can be coal-fired, natural gas, um, nuclear power. In traditional power plants, the general idea is you input some kind of energy to heat a bunch of water, turn it into steam. The steam turns turbines. The turbines are connected via a shaft to a generator. And when that generator spins, it generates electricity. Pretty simple, right? Well, um, you have a few problems because you have many, many power plants, and most of those power plants have many, many generators. And each generator, as it turns, is outputting a certain voltage, and the key point is they all have to run at the exact same frequency. Now, normally, this is done by running each generator at a particular rotational speed. And if you go above or below that rotational speed, instead of getting a stable 50 hertz, in the case of most of the world, or 60 hertz, in the case of North America, instead of getting a stable frequency, it goes up or down. And you don't want that. You want this, the frequency of the alternating current to be rock solid. So what you have to do is you have to synchronize all these generators at all these power plants so they're all spinning at exactly the same speed. It's a bit like a ballet. If the dancers at the ballet aren't perfectly synchronized, nobody comes to the theater. So in Spain, what they saw was that instead of getting a nice clean 50 hertz on the power grid, uh, it started fluctuating. And so they fixed it. There are automatic mechanisms to fix it. Um, there are manual mechanisms to fix it. The point is, they saw fluctuations, this happens normally. Okay, they fixed it, no problem. Twelve minutes later, the same thing happened. There were fluctuations in the frequency of the power on the grid. So, again, they fixed it, no harm done, no blackouts, everything was kosher. Now here's where it starts to get weird. Because eleven minutes after that, several power generators in Spain tripped. They went offline. Now, normally, uh, that can happen for a number of reasons, but the point is that they lost 2.2 gigawatts of power generating capacity. Uh, just to note here, your average hair dryer consumes 1,800 watts, 1,800 watts. Your average coal or nuclear power plant produces one gigawatt, which is one billion watts. So, that's a lot of watts. It's a lot of power. So to lose 2.2 gigawatts is losing 2.2 billion watts of capacity. And when these generators went offline, the frequency of the grid in Spain dropped. That's bad. The voltage also dropped. Well, okay, hang on a minute. At the time, we're told that Spain was using only 25 out of a total of 32 gigawatts of capacity. Okay, but if 2 gigawatts of power was lost, you still have 25 out of a maximum of 30 available. So why the heck did the frequency and the voltage drop? Because if you have all this excess, you should be fine. Well, a clue might be in the fact that at that moment in time, 71% of that 32 gigawatts available, 71% of it was coming from solar and wind power. 
so-called green energy. There are a few problems with green energy, or more specifically with how green energy is being implemented in most countries, but we'll get to that later. Well, that's a little weird, because if you have 7 gigawatts of overhead power available, and you lose 2.2, you've still got all this extra power available, so other power generators on the grid just kick in, and they generate a little more, and you're fine, right? Well, no, apparently not in this case. So, within seconds of these generators going offline, the frequency of the network dropped to a dangerously low 48 hertz. That's way too low. So what happened is automatic load shedding was triggered. Now, load shedding is when you have a generator and it's powering a variety of circuits. You can think of it, if you have a generator in your home, you're powering different circuits, different rooms, each one on a different circuit breaker. And load shedding is when the generator goes holy crap, I can't provide all the power because you're, say, in your bedroom with your hair dryer, you just flipped it on. I can't provide all this power, so what I'll do is I'll selectively flip a couple breakers off and disconnect various circuits so that I don't get overloaded, and when those loads drop, I'll turn each one back on individually. The same thing happens with power plants. Automatic load shedding, maybe they cut off an industrial sector, maybe a shopping center, uh, maybe some homes, whatever. Power is prioritized for things like hospitals and that kind of thing. So they lose these two generators, the grid frequency drops, automatic load shedding kicks in, and it causes a temporary blackout in certain parts, certain regions, certain parts of the country. And of course the idea here is if you temporarily disable the power to a few little bits, you'll be able to get your other generators back up to the proper speed, dumping more power onto the grid, and then you can turn those back on, and you won't have a nationwide blackout. That was the whole idea. The system worked as it was designed to work. At the same time that this automatic load shedding was triggered, the high-voltage lines that connect France to Spain, where they can send power in either direction, because countries share power with each other all the time, um, the high-voltage connection between France and Spain tripped. It cut off. Now, most likely that was because on the French side, the French grid said, holy crap, your frequency has dropped to 48 hertz, Spain. Uh, that's not good. We're going to disconnect from you temporarily so that you don't take our grid down with you. So that makes sense. Things were working as they should. And three seconds after that, the entire Spanish grid went down and took Portugal with it. So what seems to have happened in Spain and Portugal is that a cascade effect happened. When you lose power at a series of generators and power plants, all the rest of the power generating capacity has to pick up the slack. And very often that's not possible, especially if 71% of your power is coming from solar and wind, which is not really scalable. If you're using natural gas or coal or nuclear, you can simply feed the boilers more fuel to spin the generators and make more power. You can put more generators online, with solar and wind, you don't really have that option, because the sun is only shining so much, the wind is only blowing so hard, what are you going to do? So the backup power to stabilize the grid often comes from fossil fuel powered and nuclear powered power stations. But for some reason, that didn't happen. Maybe too many power plants went offline, the rest couldn't pick up the slack, and so everything one by one, uh, and apparently it all happens in the blink of an eye when a catastrophic failure occurs, whoop, the whole country goes black. Now, normally there are protection mechanisms. If the frequency of the AC power is too high or too low, if the voltage gets too high or too low, everything is monitored by special equipment, and that equipment communicates with other equipment on the network and other power plants and even other countries, and they're all sharing data and saying, here you go, blah, 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 blah. And the equipment monitors, and it looks for these types of failure events, and it automatically switches things off and does all kinds of other fun things to make sure that the grid remains stable. And we see from our timeline here that at least some of that equipment was working properly. But we're also told that much of it did not work properly. So apparently some of this monitoring equipment simply went offline, which means supposedly we don't have enough data yet to find out exactly what happened exactly why did the grid collapse. Um, that's a little bit weird, because am I supposed to believe that the equipment 
you know, you've got industrial equipment and it's monitoring the grid. That equipment didn't have its own battery backup. So what, it's powered by the grid that it's monitoring. So if that grid goes down, it can't tell anyone that the grid has gone down. It, you'd have a battery backup, like for your desktop computer or something. Um, I'm having a hard time believing that the power engineers in Spain are dumb as rocks. So that increases the weirdness even more. Because what happened? Well, many people have suggested perhaps a cyber attack. Was there some kind of hacking that caused all these systems to go down and that's also why there's no data because it's all gone? I don't know, but many people have suggested that and it seems at least semi-feasible. And of course, as I said at the beginning of this video, Portugal saying that Spain said there was an unusual atmospheric phenomenon. Well, I looked into that and I could find no evidence of a coronal mass ejection from the sun, solar flares, you know, hitting the Earth's magnetosphere, causing a geomagnetic storm, which causes ground currents, which causes, you know, giant breakers to trip and parts of the grid to go down. Nothing like that happened. Um, I didn't find anything about any unusual atmospheric events, no crazy weather. Yes, the spring here in uh, southwestern Europe has been a bit weird. Uh, it's more like autumn most of the time than spring, but... Sure, we had some storms recently, um, nothing particularly crazy at that particular time on April 28th. Now, officially, you'd think there would be an investigation of this blackout, and in fact, there is an ongoing investigation. And we are informed that it will take five months, it will be September or October of 2025, this year, before we find out what actually happened. Now again, that ramps up the weirdness factor even more because why is it taking them five months to gather the data to figure out what happened? Surely there are records of what occurred at different power plants and it won't take five months to compile all the data and figure out what happened. And of course, the entire country and all of Portugal went down, so the Spanish are going to be chomping at the bit to figure out exactly what happened so that this doesn't happen again, no? So the weirdness factor just keeps amping up like again and again and yeah a lot of people are saying yeah that's because 71 percent of their power came from green energy uh, in fact spain itself boasted just i think it was a few days prior that there was one day where a hundred percent of their power came from renewables aren't we awesome and a few short days later only 71 percent of the power was coming from renewables but poof their entire grid goes down so, is there something to green energy? Well, to answer that question is going to require another video. So, stay tuned. The short answer is, well, it depends on how you do it, and no, we're not doing it very intelligently. In fact, many countries and regions around the world in recent years who have more than 50% renewable power on their grid, they're starting to see some rather serious issues. So, Spain at 71%, Right. So what exactly is the problem with a fully green grid? Stay tuned for my next video to find out. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.